specific language questions. They're fairly technical, so um, it will bear with me um, as I go there. Three language questions. I'm going to do them one after the other. Okay, we'll start with this one. Um, the Evergreen Valley College has been leased to a private developer for the last 95 years. Based on the current district population size and the community college facilities for city residents, would you as a council member approve private commercial or housing development on the community college land within the city? And the order will be, we'll start with Ms. Malayo, um, Mr. Wade, Ms. Arenas, uh, Mr. Webb, and uh, Mr. Burgess. Um, Ms. Malayo? So you're referring to the 27 acres, is that what the question is? I think that is, yes. Okay. Um, well, you, as you all probably know, the 27 acres, uh, it was decided that there was not going to be housing put on it. I know that that was very, very, uh, very much of a concern for everyone as far as they did not want housing on that property. I think that, that the school, uh, Evergreen Valley College and the district hasn't done a really great job of community outreach, and I think there's a lot of misinformation out there. I think there's a lot of, of uh, anger and resentment about what's going on in the school and the, at the board level. And I think that before I comment on what I think should happen, I think that the community needs to be more involved and get more input for, and have uh, some more information provided by the, the new chancellor because I think that I've heard good things about her and I hear that she's trying to work with everyone and make everyone aware of what, what the plan is, which I think is really, uh, nothing is in stone at this point in time. Uh, Mr. Wake. I think Sandy Brandle has put it best in the op-ed that ran in, in the paper the other day. This community deserves a community college that we can be proud of. I don't know if that fits in the footprint of what they have now. I don't know if it needs another 27 acres. I don't know if it needs another 127 acres. But I do know that there's a reason that 18,000 kids a, year, a, a day drive out of this area to go to Danza or West Valley or some of the other alternatives out there. So until the school can prove to the community that we have a program that we can be proud to send our kids to, and that the counselors at the local high schools, the schools, can be proud to recommend that their students go look at as an alternative, then no, they should not be doing anything with that property until that point in time. It's also a great way to reduce carbon emissions, get rid of those 18,000 commutes, and also to mitigate the cost of college. Community college is a great way to start your college education. <laughs> Um, your response. Public, uh, open space is really important. It really adds to the quality of life of our families. It creates a sense of community for us. And so I think it's important for us to preserve it and protect it. Um, I agree with Ms. Malaro. I think there's some misinformation about what this development is going to look like. And I think that we have a very strong community uh, with a very strong voice provide the direction that we want. Um, and I think there's two issues here. One is the issue of the open space and what to do with it if it, if it should be set up for retail uh, or not. And then the other is the quality of education that uh, the college is offering our students. And why aren't our students attending uh, school right in the backyard? So I think we need to take a look at both of those <coughs> Um, Mr. Wood, uh, please hold your applause. Again, if I have to remind the audience again, we'll stop the uh, one. What if I give a really good answer? Mr. Wood, no. <laughs> your time is ticking down. You just lost 10 seconds. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> stop it. <laughs> I've had several kind of conversations in it with residents, and there's one gentleman in particular back there, a very handsome. What do we do with this land? Do we have enough land to provide a quality higher education offering for our students in this area? I don't think so. 
gentleman over here asked me how I feel about it earlier, and I didn't want to give him a solid answer, but now that I'm on the spot, how much room do we have for retail? How much room do we have for higher education? So if I voted on it today, then no, I wouldn't support allowing the zoning to change. Mr. Burris? I also agree that if there's any development on that parcel, then it should be an extension of the campus, college campus. I also see it as an equity issue. And, you know, why, why do 18,500 you know, community college students here in our district, reside within the San Jose Area Community College District boundaries, have to drive across town in order to, to take classes, community college classes? We should be investing in our local community. Again, that can also reduce our carbon footprint. We also uh, invest in better enrichment opportunities for our students here locally. So no, I would not. I currently oppose the current uh, submitted application. Thank you. Okay. Uh, the other line is question, I guess, we're really going to. <laughs> uh, this question is: Do you think the Bird Industrial Vantage and or the Pleasant Tail Golf property should retain their current zoning as campus industrial and public quasi public, respectively, or would you support rezoning these properties? which would allow housing and other uses. And then the second question tied to that is, what do you envision would be the best use of these properties? And we'll answer these. We'll start with Ms. Arenas, then Mr. Ms. Valayo, uh, Mr. Baruch, Mr. Wade, and Mr. Webb. I, I think we should keep the zone at just how it is now. Um, uh, because there's limited spaces for retail, and uh, obviously limited spaces, uh, open spaces, right? And I think we need to look at the general plan um, in order to reassess that. Um, we want to make sure that we have viable um, uh, retail sources so that our residents can stay in Evergreen, work in Evergreen, and spend their money in Evergreen. Thank you. Ms. Blood? I agree that we need more retail, but I also think we need to follow the general plan, which talks about urban villages, which talks about possibly, you know, taking some of these older strip malls and turning them into multi-use, uh, such as housing maybe on the top, retail on the bottom. I think there's a lot of opportunity for growth in that part. I think we can do a lot of, of that kind of smart building and smart uh, you know, affordable housing, possibly retail, all in one parcel. I think it can be done, and I think it can be done very smartly, and I think it's a long time coming. I think San Jose should have looked at doing this a long time ago. We do need more retail, but we also need, and we need to fill the existing storefronts that are empty, and there's quite a few of them out there right now. So I think it's really important that we look at the big picture, urban villages, as well as filling our storefronts creates more jobs, creates more opportunities, and also creates uh, less of a commute for our residents here. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Burles? As the General Plan 2040 points out, we're anticipating uh, an increase in 200,000, 400,000 additional residents here throughout the city of San Jose. So we can either plan for growth or we can react to growth. I want to plan for growth. So I want to make sure that that parcel right there, the old Pleasant Hills Golf Course, that it's, it's an info property that I think it's a great place for retail. We have so many single family track homes in the vicinity. You know, that can be another mom and pop coffee shop or another amenities people can walk to. It's a little more pedestrian friendly people can walk, walk or bike there. And they also have the recreation which is right across the street at the Cunningham Park. For the, the Burger Tachi site, uh, I want to make sure it's still zoned for industrial, the event that it's rezoned for housing. That would be a good opportunity for those employers to provide employee housing right there. Again, they can walk or bike to work so they can reduce our carbon footprint. Uh, again, we're promoting, promoting more healthy lifestyle by having them walk or bike. And if, you know, if there is housing, make sure it's also in. Thank you. Also, you need to look at me. I'm not. I'm, I'm not the person you have to convince. I'm going to this district. <laughs> there are audience. Okay. This one isn't about me. What do you guys want? It's campus industrial. Okay. There's one more. <laughs> this is. It doesn't matter what I think ought to happen with that property. What matters is what the community thinks ought to happen with that property. What's the best way to develop it? to create the vibrant community that we all want to be a part of, to make sure that there's jobs that we can all go to, to make
make sure that there's retail so we can get our groceries. Say Mark for the industrial piece. Um, that's, that's the kind of stuff that, that you guys get to decide. I don't get to decide it. None of these folks get to decide it. We, as a community, get to decide it. And I promise to do that for you. Thank you. Mr. I'll have to echo some of the comments made up here. We have a uh, Vision 2040 plan. And like Pat, I agree, whatever we decide to do here or out, if we deviate from that plan, we should have community input. Because after all, we live here, we'll have to deal with the traffic or benefit from whatever it is that retail or housing can give us. Thank you. Uh, the next question.